Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another question from LeetCode75, a playlist that's really useful if you are interview prepping. And I have the entire playlist linked down below if you do want to follow along. So what is this question? It is maximum twin sum of a linked list. In a linked list of size n where n is even, the ith node of the linked list is known as the twin of the n minus 1 minus ith node. All this means is that if we have four nodes, 0, 1, 2, 3, the twin of the zeroth node is going to be n minus 1 minus i. So n minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 0 is 3. So the twin for index 0 is going to be 3. And same thing for 1 and 2, right? If i is 1, the twin of index 1 is going to be n minus 1 minus 1. So if n is 4, the size of our linked list, 4 minus 2 is going to be 2. The twin of index 1 is going to be index 2. So we're basically starting off from both ends, pairing them up as we meet in the middle. And the twin sum is defined as the sum of a node and its twin. Given the head of a linked list with even length, we want to return the maximum twin sum of the linked list. So over here, example one, we have the twin sum five, one, which is six, and also four, two, which is six. Both are six. The maximum here is going to be six. Example two, we have four, two, two, three. What are our twin sums? Our twins are going to be four, three, and two, two. So the max sum is going to be seven from four and three, and that is our output. And our last example, we have one and 100,000. So just summing those two numbers up together, our max twin sum is going to be 100,000 and one. And our constraints, we know for sure our linked list is going to have an even number of notes. This problem is actually easier than what you are probably thinking. We have five, four, two, one as our linked list. We're just gonna use example one from here. And we know we want to find our max twin sum. And our twin sums are defined as the sums between our twin, which is on the opposite end of our linked list. So five is going to be paired with one and four is going to be paired with two. Now, if this was a list instead of a linked list, this would be super easy. We'd start on both ends of our list and just move in calculating our twin sum and just keeping track of the max value. Because this is a linked list, we can only move in one direction. But can we change something so that it mimics that list behavior? What we can do is split our linked list down the middle in half. So we can break this connection over here between four and two, and then just reverse the pointers for this linked list. So instead of two pointing to one, it's going to be one pointing to two. And at this point, all we have to do is start off at our heads of our two separate linked lists, move down, summing up the pairs together up until there are no more nodes in our linked list. And we just keep track of the maximum we've seen to return that at the very end. And that's all we need to do. So now that we have our logic in place put together, what we're going to do is code this up and then run through a complete example. So now we can code it up. We know we want to find our second half of the linked list, reverse it, and then just iterate through. But in order to find that second half, we first need to find our midpoint and break our linked list. If you've seen my previous videos on linked lists, you probably already know how to do this. But in case you haven't, a quick tip to ever find a midpoint or a specific point in a singly linked list, what we wanna do is just use two pointers. So I'm gonna initialize slow and fast to start off at head. Now, if I wanna find the midpoint, the halfway point of a linked list, I'm gonna have one pointer move at half the speed as the other. Because once that other pointer reaches the end of our linked list, our slower pointer moving at half the speed is only going to be at that midpoint covering half the nodes. So what we're going to do is while fast and fast dot next. So right now we have a pointer fast and slow both at our head over here in our linked list. While fast and fast dot next, we're going to move fast over by two. So fast equals fast dot next dot next. So fast is now going to equal its next next node. So fast goes to node two and slow is going to move at half that speed. So slow is going to go to slow dot next. So slow only goes to four. It's going to be over here. We go back in this while loop again, fast and fast.next are both not none. So we can go in this loop and we move fast down over by two. So it goes to its next next node, which is none. And slow just goes to its next node, which is two. Now, once we exit our while loop, we know slow is going to point to the beginning of the second half of our linked list. So now we know our new linked list is going to start off at this point, And we just want to go ahead and reverse all the pointers in this linked list. So in order to do that, I'm going to set my current pointer equal to slow. 
So I have current over here and I'm going to have my previous point to not. Now, how do we reverse a linked list? What we're going to do is while current, while we still have a none node in our current pointer, we want to reverse pointers. So we want our current pointers next node to point to our previous node. In order to do that, and in order to not lose connection of our next node as we do that and move along, we're going to store our next node in a variable. So I'm going to call temp to be current.next. So temp is over here now. And now that we have this node stored, we can just change the next pointer for our current node. So current.next is going to equal previous. So our current next node no longer points to one. It now points to none. So this connection over here is gone. Now we want to repeat the same thing up until their nodes to process. So we're going to reset our previous and current values. Previous is going to be what we have in our current value over here. So previous is going to be two and our current node is going to be temp. So it's no longer two and it is now one. And that makes sense, right? Our new current is going to be one. Our new previous is two. We change the pointers here and we keep moving down and doing the same thing. So our new current node is going to be one. So we go back in this while loop while current, this is true. It's not none. We do the same thing again. Temp is going to be current.next. So this is just pointing to none right now. Current.next is going to equal previous. So the next of one is going to be two. So now one's next node is two. Previous equals current. So previous is over here and current equals temp. So current is over here as well. Now going back in this while loop, while current is not going to be true anymore, it is now none. And we exit out of this for loop. And as you can see, once we exit out, our second half of this linked list is now reversed. We start off at one, going to two, going to none. And for our original linked list, our head is going from five to four to two to now none. So we have our two separate linked lists. Now we just want to iterate through summing them together. So I have my head at five for my original linked list. I'm going to say head two is going to be what I have in previous. Previous now points to the head of this linked list right over here. And while head two, while it is not none, we just want to go through our linked list from both ends. Since we are keeping track of our max sum, I'm going to define max sum to be zero. And as we iterate through, we're just updating max sum. So max sum is going to be the max of what we have in max sum so far and the values of our two heads. So head dot val plus head two dot val. Whatever the max is, is going to be stored in max sum. Once we calculate the sum, we want to move both head and head two down to their next pointer. So head is going to equal head dot next and head two equals head two dot next. So doing a walkthrough of this side now, we're going to have head two being previous. So now we have head and head two. I'm getting rid of the other variables. They're still there, but it's going to be cleaner if we just focus on head and head two. We also initialize max sum to be zero. So max sum is zero. Now while head two, while it's not none, this is true. So we go in our while condition. Max sum is going to be the max of what we have so far. And head dot val, which is five, plus head two dot val, which is one. So five plus one is six. Six is greater than zero. So max sum is now six. Head is now equaling head dot next, so the next node of our current head. And head two is going to equal head two dot next. So it is now at two over here and four over here. We go back in this while loop. This is still true. It's not none. What is the max sum? Well, it's going to be the max of what we have so far and the values at our current heads. So four plus two is six. It's not greater than our current max sum, so no updates are needed. And we just move head and head two down. So head moves to two because this connection was still there. But head two is now at none, which is why we did while head two for our while loop. Now over here, we see while head two, this is no longer true. It's now at none. So we exit our while loop. And all we have to do in the end is return our max sum, which is going to be six. Now let's go ahead and submit this. And actually, this is wrong. This should be TMP over here. Let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity for space, we're not really using any extra space. We're just modifying our pointers in place and iterating through. We're just keeping track of max sum. So there's going to be constant O of one. It's not dependent on how big our input gets. We're still only keeping track of one variable. And for time, it's going to be an order n solution. If there are n elements in our input, that's how many times we're going to be in our while loops, right? First, we go through our entire array with two pointers, find that midpoint. Then we reverse this second half. So that's another n over two nodes that we go over. And then we iterate from both ends, both halves until we meet in the middle. So that's another n by two n by two operation. So we go through every single node for a total of three times, but it's still three n. We don't really care about constant. So this is going to be an O of n time complexity solution. 
Now we just did a complete walkthrough with example one over here, but if you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.